Hello, this is Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie from deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com. Welcome. I am so excited to tell you about this month's hashtag. It is the first time that Pantone has ever selected two colors for their color of the year. Our hashtag is hashtag color of the year art. And you'll see a playlist up in the top corner of this site. Go there and look at all of the amazing arts and crafts that people are coming up with using these colors, rose quartz and serenity. So you have this lovely warm pinky color and this cool purpley blue. If you were to look up the Pantone 153919 TCX, that would get you this beautiful purpley blue that's a soft color. Pantone 131520 TCX gets you this beautiful rose quartz. It's a slightly warmer pink. It's not a peach. It's still a soft pink, but there's an ever so slight, slight warm undertone to it. So I'm going to be doing my project, and it is a lovely teapot that was handmade. I'll show you what it's starting out like here. You will have seen the picture of the finished product in the thumbnail when you started. So where I am right now is I have this teapot. And I started this teapot from a pile of cardboard and got it built to this point. I will be attaching another iCard over here and it will have the bonus video of how I made this teapot. And this teapot really is like those um, paper mache craft teapots or boxes that you would get at the craft store. But I made this one from scratch. And it took me about four hours to make it. So it's not something you're going to ever see the slow speed video of. There's just no way that I can do that to anyone. So I will be mixing my colors. I know that it's going to take a lot of white for each of the colors. The rose quartz, I'm going to be using quinacridone crimson and a tiny touch of cad yellow medium. I'm using artist grade paints. You could be using craft paints and that's okay. You want to make sure that whatever white you are using is a very opaque white. Because when you're layering your pink over the blue color, you don't want the blue showing through the pink. So to make my blue color, I will be using both phthalo blue and ultramarine blue along with a lot of white and then just the tiniest touch of the quinacridone crimson. And the reason for that is that the blue is a slightly purpley blue. It's not a lavender. It is still a soft, soft blue, but it has just a hint of a purple to it. I'm not going to mix the rose quartz to start with because that is going to be used as my color on top of the blue. So I'm going to cover the whole teapot with the blue color first. Just completely solid, co solid coats of the blue. I'm hoping that one coat will do it, but it will probably take two. So what I'm going to do is just get started by painting the lid so you can see how the paint goes on. And then I will put it into fast forward and we will 
quickly get the pot done so that we can get it dry and move on to the rose quartz. When I do the rose quartz, I am going to be using this lovely stencil as my pattern on the outside of the teapot. So it will be a blue background with the rose quartz damask pattern. And this is a Tim Holtz collection, uh, part of their Gothic. Um, and it is the, let's see, the THS026 is the number on this one. And it's lovely. It's the perfect size for this teapot. Just the right scale for it. So, very exciting. Oh, I hate these caps. Just like all of the other artists I have ever seen that have the golden paints, love the paint, hate the caps, hurt the hands. So, I am going to put out a lot of the white. And that may not be a lot, a lot, but it's, it's enough. It is enough. And then I am going to be putting out just a touch. And that's way more than I need of the ultramarine blue. And a touch of the phthalo blue. And an even smaller touch of the quinacridone crimson. Because really and truly, it's going to be little tiny, tiny bits. So, my ratio is going to be one blue, uh, ultramarine, one blue, phthalo, Get that off of there. And just a touch of the red, of the quinacridone crimson. And then quite a bit of the white. And get that mixed up together. And I'm using the back end of the brush so that way I can actually get most of that paint back So that is a real pretty color already. It needs more white though. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see a little bit better the color I'm doing. And now this camera does not show the color true. I will let you know that. This color is a lot more blue than what is showing. It's kind of showing green on the screen, and it's not. There is no green in this color. More white. And I need a little tiny touch more of this quinacridone. And this is making a lovely, calm, beautiful blue. That has just the slightest hint of the purple to it without being overwhelming. Without, tell without telling a purple story, it's actually blue. It's really, really pretty blue. And now that I've mixed it up once, I'll be able to continue mixing this color as I need it. I just want to make sure that I don't waste any of it. We're going to get this started. 
taking the paint, getting a nice big brush. This is about a one inch brush. It is a, uh, it, it's called a number 22. It is a Royal and Lang nickel. Um, so it's just a, just a bright. Not that you really need to worry about what the type of brush it is. But this is just a lovely soft blue with a tiny bit of a purple cast to it. Not much. And I'm going to zoom this back out now. Just to make it a little bit easier to see. Since I'm working on rather large things. And I keep moving it around, so... I want to make sure that we're staying in focus. So this is looking pretty good. Pretty much have it all painted off. Just want to paint around this edge, and then I will paint the the whole teapot with the exact same blue. And instead of having me talk during the whole thing and have you have to watch the same color being put on, being mixed exactly the same way every time. And then I drop it, drop that right into the paint. So I'm just going to, luckily I have it gessoed. This part I was just going to be leaving white anyway. So I'll just swirl this paint around and it's just going to end up a soft blue on the inside now. Not worried about it. It's not a big deal. We'll just get that paint blended. There we go. So now, instead of being white on the inside, it's a soft blue. And that's okay. Just make it look like it was supposed to be that way. Because, you know, that's what we do. When you're the artist, you can say, it was supposed to be like that. And it looks pretty. It's not so stark now. So, moving that out of the way and hoping that I don't have to do multiple coats. Let's just touch that up where I was touching it with my fingers. All right. So I am going to start painting this pot and we are going to get through this as quickly as I, I possibly can. So here we go. All right, stencil brush, nice flat brush. The paint is nice and thick, and I will swirl it off to really get the paint into the bristles. I do have a cloth just sitting off camera, 
that I am going to tap my brush, my bristles of my brush into. And I am not someone who has done a lot of stenciling. I've done a little bit. I did the whole teapot once already. <laughs> so I am not going to be gluing or putting adhesive on the back of this. There's a couple times when I need to flip it over to make my pattern sort of kind of match up a little bit. I'm just going to slide it into camera here. So I will just take this brush that has, ooh, there, now you can see the pink. Let's see. You kind of see that pink on there? That rose quartz, lovely color. All right, so I am just going to swirl because I have dried off most of the paint from the brush and swirl, swirl, swirl and swirl, swirl, swirl and hope that I've got this paint on thick enough and opaque enough so that the white of this paint the white base in this paint will cover the blue and so you will be able to read that pink and because this is such a small area that I'm working on is the reason why I am just holding it with my fingers and I'm being very careful I'm keeping my bristles straight up and down And I'm seeing that the pink is covering pretty well. Still seeing some blue. Some of that blue is area that I hadn't done yet at all. I really like this stencil because it is a very detailed. And it's the right scale for the teapot. There we go. I think I've got that. And then pull it off. Ooh. Yeah. That has turned out very pretty. That pink is really pretty. It is very, very, it's covering the blue, but it is reading almost whitish, just barely there pink. This particular stencil, if you offset it, you can actually make it look like the pattern is going all the way around. So I'm looking at it and trying to offset just close enough. It's not going to be a perfect offset, but it's going to be close enough. Swirl my paint into the brush, really load it up there. Tap it off on the cloth. Put my fingers down and hold it in place and start working around it again. Now earlier I was saying that if anybody wanted to know how I made the teapot, or where I got the teapot, I made the teapot. It started from a pile of cardboard and some paper uh, that was packing paper. It came in a package that I had received and glue and decoupage glue, hot glue. And if anybody wants to see how it was made, there will be a bonus video up in the iCard also. So in the area where the CAC playlist is located, there will also be a link to the video on how I made the teapot. This teapot took me four hours. It was crazy crazy. I should have just gone and looked for a teapot made out of paper mache at the craft store. But I didn't even think of looking for something like that. I wanted to make this. 
I had an idea in my head on how it would get made. And I did it. And I'm really, really pleased with it. And look how that pattern sort of wraps around the teapot now. So I am going to continue on doing the stencil the rest of the way around. And I am probably not going to be talking too much here. I am just going to get on with business and get this done. And then we will meet up again at the end when I have it all finished. Um, I will say that after I am done doing all of the stenciling, I'm going to spray it after it's dry. I am going to spray it off with a with an acrylic, um, clear acrylic varnish spray and let that dry. And then it will be sealed and protected. This is a lovely box that looks like a teapot. And it is probably going to be used in another, um, in another video with uh, some additional things done. So I'll see you at the end. There you have it. The teapot done in the Pantone colors of the year, Serenity Blue and Rose Quartz Pink. And I am so tickled with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you would please click like and subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't, what you think I need to work on. I'd really appreciate it. As always, go out and do something creative.